Quick one today on an important aspect of our viral issue. So the all-important all-cause mortality trends and prior respiratory season severity and how it links to the actual severity experience during this issue. So we're going to be focusing on science and data, as usual, versus maybe bad science and superstitious thinking. So I'm going to show you now PLC has come out with a nice analysis from Max Planck Institute. And when we look at the USA, we see that 2019 and 2020 had very soft respiratory seasons. And then, of course, we get a spike. So these soft seasons would have built up susceptible people, sadly. Uh, and that accounts for possibly a lot of the severity of the spike. And what PLC has done has created a 52-week moving average, uh, which makes it a lot clearer. So here we see the USA being below the mortality expected for 19 through to 20. And then there is, of course, a spike and it kind of normalizes back to the normal level. And looking at European nations that were hard hit, we see Spain with a big dip here in expected mortality over the last year and a half, and then a spike. England and Wales, very noticeable dip below the expected mortality, and then a spike, a catch-up of sorts. Here's Scotland, very notable also, spike following a long period of below the average mortality line. Netherlands, same thing. Sweden, same thing, right? Spike following a low period in expected mortality. Italy, well, they mainly for nearly three seasons had a lack of normal respiratory spikes in mortality and then a dip beforehand and a spike. France, similar as well. Low for a long period and soft season spike kind of corrects that. Now, here's some less affected countries and we see a kind of a more flattened line of expected mortality, no trends in Finland. And again, not much happening then during this issue. Germany, very similar. Back in 18, they had a significant amount, none in 17, and a long flat period, no real spike. Estonia, similar, nothing happening for this issue. Hungary, a couple of bad years, above average mortality, nothing happening for this issue. Iceland, pretty much matches up, dip, spike. Israel, again, normal mortality in the past few years, not much going on, not much going on now. Luxembourg, similarly, not so nice uh, respiratory seasons back here, bit lower here, but on average, nothing really changing on the mortality curve. Lithuania, similar. Norway, similar, flat. Portugal, similar again. Not great back in 18, and then a bit of a dip here, not much of a spike. Slovakia, similarly. Actually, they had a couple of bad seasons a couple of years ago, but now no mortality above expected. So the summary is basically that this data should be looked at, should be thought about. And just looking at all of Europe, my earlier analysis, July the 3rd, we have 2018 winter season was 140,000 excess deaths, right? You can see that integrated from these humps for these age groups. Uh, then we have, for Europe overall, on average, a very long and surprisingly low season. 19 was soft, and then we have all through 19 and into March 20, no excess death at all. So again, a lot of susceptible people would have been building up in a sense, and all deaths are tragic, but we have to stay focused on data too and explain trends. And then we have, in March, April, quite a short, sharp, a spike, as we've seen from this issue, around 170,000 excess deaths in 2020. And it's pretty much gone and faded now. The season's waned in Europe. The deaths are down really low. And we have it, on average, not massively different than 2018. So keep focused on the data, people, and uh, many factors here. But we need to be looking at all of them. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my subscribe button in the middle of the screen. And go to extratimemovie.com to see our fascinating new documentary on stopping and reversing heart disease.